Today, I want to give you 10 top tips on how to think creatively. Tip number one, allocate time for thinking. Thinking is part of our work as researchers and scholars. Sometimes it's difficult to see it that way because it's pretty much invisible. But even so, it is part of our work and we need to set aside proper time for it, not just time in the shower or the supermarket queue, but time for thinking. Tip number two, use your imagination to help you think. The imagination is a really useful tool in research and often undervalued. Imagine your research project, imagine what lies ahead, imagine what problems you might face and how you might solve them. Imagine what successes you might experience and how you might celebrate them. Use your imagination, it will help you to think. Tip number three, also draw on your emotions. They're not separate from thinking, they're part of us, they're inextricably linked, we can't separate out our emotions and our cognition. And our feelings can provide useful information about what we think and for what we think. Tip number four, generate as many ideas as you can and then evaluate those ideas to see whether they're good ideas or not. They won't all be, mine certainly aren't all good ideas. Generating and evaluating ideas is known as divergent thinking, and this is a very useful form of thinking when you're thinking creatively. Tip number five. If your imagination or your divergent thinking reveals any problems or potential problems, then look for solutions to those problems. The kind of thinking that solves problems is known as convergent thinking and is also very useful. Tip number six. Be aware of the assumptions that you make and their implications. Keep an eye out for normative statements such as always or never or can't. These are often a sign of fixed thinking and fixed thinking is not creative thinking. Tip number seven. Discuss your work with people from different backgrounds and or different disciplines or just people who are as different from you as possible. If you can't find people who are different from you then think about what would someone really different from you make of the work that you're doing and the ideas that you're having? People with different backgrounds and experiences can bring a very rich perspective to our own work. Tip number eight, consider all ideas carefully, even the ones you disagree with, perhaps especially the ones you disagree with. It's too easy to just reject an idea we disagree with without really thinking about it properly doesn't mean you have to try to agree with everything, that's not going to be possible. But you need to be clear about why the people you disagree with think the way they do and what that means to them as much as you can. Tip number nine, reflect on your own experiences to find out what you can learn from them. Some people do this as a daily or a weekly exercise, others are a bit more ad hoc about it, just perhaps reflecting on experiences that are particularly unusual. Whichever way you do it, however much of it you do, it's a really helpful aid to creative thinking. Tip number 10, question your own theories and conclusions as well as those of others. This kind of questioning is known as critical thinking and it's perhaps one of the most important aspects, although I would argue that all 10 of these approaches are important and work well together. But questioning is at the heart of our work as researchers. Every research project starts with a question, but the questioning doesn't stop there. We need to keep questioning as we go. Not just to be fully sceptical non-stop, because that just gets tiresome. But questioning our thoughts, questioning other people's thoughts, and seeing what we can learn from that. Those are my 10 top tips on how to think creatively.